What a wonderful day here at Stockton for this great, great ceremony to honor our very brave men and women who served this country. I will now ask the um, Galloway Township Color Guard to present colors and the Student Veteran Organization to present the flag. Now introduce our own stock of power for singing in the national anthem. Sergeant Valente, please retire the flag.
Coach, coach turn. Port. Thank you very much, our great Stock Apollo, for continuing uh, this tremendous uh, contribution to our veteran community. And thank you, Galloway Township Police, for pres presenting the colors today. And a special thank you to our student veteran organization, Flag Detail, that has uh, worked diligently this week to get it right, which they did. Today we celebrate our very best, our heroes, men and women, who have sacrificed to assure our freedom. Today is also a special day for Stockton as our veteran affairs program and our veterans in particular, who have been ranked number six in the nation as veteran-friendly colleges. Just think, seven years ago, we had 79 veterans on campus. And we're just beginning our journey to help our vet veterans succeed in higher education. Now, over 600 and 40 veterans, and a program that is celebrated nationally. 
This is celebrated nationally because of you. Because of the Stockton community, its dedication from the top down for the veterans of this college and for the veterans of this nation. And for our student veteran organization, which I am extremely proud of in its endeavors in the community, working on national focused programs such as suicide prevention, homeless for uh, helping our homeless veterans, and other causes that are dear to their heart. We are very fortunate to have the leadership of this great organization, most of which are combat veterans. They've been there. They know what needs to be done from our student veteran level, and they are doing it. We're very proud of you, and let's uh, a round of applause for our student veterans. This is just more proof that Stockton University can do pretty much anything. But we still have far to go. Every college in America must be number one when it comes to assisting our veterans. During the Revolutionary, Revolutionary War, when General Washington would visit his troops, he made sure his troops ate first, received the supplies that they need before he did and were given medical treatment before he received it. I wonder what General Washington would think of our veterans, our, how our veterans are treated today. 100 mile trips each way to get health care. High unemployment amongst our veterans. 50,000 homeless veterans in our streets today. And 22 a day are veterans committing suicide. A VA that is corrupt beyond compare. He did his best for his troops. Can we say the same today? 38 states have veteran courts, but not New Jersey. Other schools around the country have veteran parking for those suffering from PTSD and TBI, but not Stockton. But Stockton must simply do better. As a whole, our nation must do better for our veterans. So yes, we have a long way to go, but we will get there. I am confident we will get there because of our focus from this tiny college in a, in a heart of the Pinelands in, in New Jersey, being a force on the national stage for veterans around this uh, country. In 1963, 52 years ago today, in his last Veteran Day speech, President John F. Kennedy stated, let every nation know whether it wishes us well or ill, we shall pay any price, bear any burden, meet any hardship, support any foe, to assure the survival and success of liberty. On this Veterans Day, let us renew our promise to fulfill our sacred obligations to our veterans and their families by providing the very best educational opportunity to assure their success. God bless our veterans. God bless this great nation. And thank each of you for attending this great ceremony. It is now my distinct pleasure and honor to present to you a person who from day one has championed the cause of veterans throughout Stockton and throughout this state and beyond. Dr. Pedro Santana has stood firm in the cause of veterans here at Stockton. He has never wavered on any issue. He is what this country needs leadership in the right direction, and leadership that focuses on our great veterans. I'd like to introduce Dr. Pedro Santana. Thank you, Tom, for the warm introduction. Good afternoon. 
and welcome to Stockton University's Veterans Day program celebration. On behalf of Stockton University, I would like to thank all of you for attending this program as we pay respects in proper Stockton form and function to those who are currently serving or whom have served in the armed forces of the United States. These young men and women are the truest representation of the word hero today. We are here to commemorate them and the sacrifices that they've made along with those sacrifices made by their families. I would be remiss if I, if I did not take a moment to acknowledge a few persons that were instrumental in making this event possible. From the Office of Veteran Affairs, Mr. Tom O'Donnell, Assistant Dean of Students, whom worked tirelessly on making today's program possible. The last time I was at this podium on Veterans Day, I was standing in for Tom as he grieved the passing of his father, a true hero. Mr. Thomas J. O'Donnell Sr. passed on Thursday, November 7, 2013. Tom's father, Mr. O'Donnell, was age 89 and served in World War II under General George S. Patton. He was highly decorated and awarded the Silver Star, Bronze Star, and Purple Heart. He received a full military honor uh, burial in the Oakland Memorial Gardens Veterans of Valor C uh, Cemetery in Titusville, Florida. Tom, your dad is smiling on you today as we celebrate the distinction that you've brought to our university, being number six in the nation in serving our veterans. You have brought to this campus in your unrelentless pursuit of doing what's right for our veterans here at Stockton, this wonderful badge of honor, badge of distinction. I would also like to uh, extend my, my sincere thanks and appreciation to Ms. Martha McGinnis from our Veteran Affairs Operation. <laughs> Additionally, the Veteran Resource Team and the Ve Veteran Advisory Board you are all in an exceptional league. Furthermore, this program would not have been possible with, without the unwavering support and dedication of the Stockton University President, Dr. Harvey Kesselman, and the Board of Trustees, Dr. Tomasa Gonzalez, Vice President for Student Affairs, Dr. D. McNeely Green, Associate Vice President for Student Affairs, Ms. Wendy Lang, Director for Operation College Promise, and Paul Garrity, Sergeant at Arms for the Stockton Student Veteran Organization. The Honorable Diane Gove, the New Jersey Assemblywoman who sits on the following committees, Military and Veteran Affairs Committee and the New Jersey Edu Higher Education uh, Invocation, uh, and the New Jersey Higher Education Committee. Additionally, uh, Pastor Quinn, and Nelson Gonzalez, the former president of our Stockton Veteran Organization. Additional individuals and offices and organizations that were pivotal, pivotal towards making today's event possible were the students and the alumni from the Stockton uh, Veteran Organization. The members of our veteran resource team, such as Tom Greitz, Donna Garrity, Martha McGinnis, Karen Matzinger, amongst uh, many others. Those from our Veteran Advisory Committee, such as Ms. Sharon Schulman, Donna Clementoni, amongst many others, and various community partners, such as Mr. Bob Ford and Mr. Herb Davis. Additionally, the offices of Plant Management, Production Services, Campus Police, the offices of Computer Services and Telecommunications, Chartwell's Dining Services, the Office of University Relations and Graphics Production, the Office of Development, the Office of Event Services and Campus Center Operations, and all the individuals and organizations that will be speaking uh, today and contributing to today's program. So I, I stand here before you seven years after the commencement of our, of our Veteran Affairs Program here at Stockton University, and I can tell you that we have answered and we will continue to answer the call with honor to our veterans 
and their commitment to our country. We will do more and we will continue to set the bar high on a national level. As we continue to lead the nation amongst the most vet veteran friendly institutions. Our veteran graduation rate is stellar by no, by, by no shape of the imagination with our veterans continuing to graduate at higher rates than much of the regular admits across the country. John F. Kennedy and his address to the nation on Veterans Day, November 11th, 1961, once said, today we are here to celebrate and to honor and to commemorate the dead and the living, the young men and women in every war since this country began, have given testimony to their loyalty to their country and their own great courage. I do not believe that any nation in the history of the world has buried its soldiers farther from its native soil than we Americans, or buried them closer to the towns in which they grew up. We celebrate this Veterans Day for a, few, uh, for a very few minutes, a few seconds of silence, and then in this country's life goes on. But I think most appropriate that when we recall on this occasion and other and every other moment when we are faced with great responsibilities, the contribution and sacrifices which so many men and women and their families have made in order to permit this country to now occupy its present position of responsibility and freedom, and in order to permit us to gather here today together. At this point in the program, I would like to call for a moment of silence to honor those heroes who have fallen defending our great nation. <coughs> Before commencing any commemoration, one must begin with the description of the signs and the symbols and the allegory associated with that which will be done for the ceremonies. At Stockton, we celebrate our Veterans Day in three distinct stations. The first of these stations begins here in front of our campus center. Stockton College's home and living room to the world. As you can see in the distance, there is an open expanse an environment for growth where all are welcomed, especially those who believe in improving themselves through the pursuit of an education. The second of these stations is in our Independence Plaza, which sits behind this building. As you walk through this building and into its front doors, your eyes will fall upon a fireplace that is kept lit as the meaning of fire, which is emblematic of warmth and energy and, and are the physical representation of the warmth and positive energy that we seek to create and share with our students and the members of our community. If you gazed through the fireplace at the exact degree and angle, you will find that at the backdrop of that fireplace sits the largest two-story representation of the Declaration of Independence for all the world to see. The Declaration itself serves as a constant reminder of the ideals and values that our noble, valiant veterans have sworn to protect, and many of which have paid the ultimate sacrifice. The third and final station is where we end the tribute prior to our luncheon celebration, which is in our Veterans Memorial Park. Our Veterans Memorial Park is situated in the innermost part of our campus and was done so intentionally so as to provide a sanctuary, a place of protection, a haven for the protection of the memory 
of all those that have fallen in the service of this great nation, but also as a representation of a cornerstone that the campus itself rests upon. Three stations, each with their own unique symbolisms and associated allegory, representative of the three branches of our government that these brave men and women have sworn to protect. Thank you, and God bless America. Thank you, uh, Patrick, or sorry, thank you, Pedro, for uh, those great uh, words, kind words, uh, and words of wisdom to help us uh, move forth in our veteran uh, program here at Stockton. Today, uh, you know, I mentioned our, our student veterans and uh, our student veteran organization and how, what great, great things that they are doing around the country. Right now, right now, Pat, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Pat uh, Carney, I'm sorry, just a loss of the thought there. Uh, Pat Carney is in North Carolina at a national veteran tournament that he was selected to represent in New Jersey and represent uh, Stockton. And he's out there carrying the Stockton flag, doing well. Uh, and again, doing a great thing for the community, raising money, raising awareness. Today, we have with us several uh, members of the executive board. I see Jesse Layton out there, uh, Vice President Justin Smythe, uh, and others uh, have done a great job in the leadership of this organization. Today, we have representing our student veteran organization a very special person, Paul Garrity. Paul is our Sergeant in Arms. And Paul is another typical example of how our veterans are part of this great community. Paul is also a member of the Kappa Sigma fraternity on this campus. Uh, a true leader, one that uh, we're all proud to have. So I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Garrity. All right. Thanks, Tom. All right. I'm not much of a professional speaker, so I pretty much just typed up a speech this morning, so bear with me. <laughs> Good afternoon. I would like to briefly give my thanks to those who could make today's events possible and all those attending. It gives me such hope that people take the time out of their day to support veterans with action and not just words. However, today is Veterans Day, and I elected to speak today to address my fellow veterans, especially those who served in combat. Friends, I'd like to tell you today about the continued service we owe to this country. Though many of us have shed our uniforms, turned our weapons into the armory for the last time, and grew out our beards, we must remember that our country still needs us. Our service has taken many of us through scathing adversity, and with it, we have emerged on the other side wiser and stronger as leaders. We must not let this strength decay after we leave our regimented lives within the military, and each veteran must find their own way to remain as tenacious and determined as they were during their service. Uncertainty lies ahead for this country, and unlike an overwhelming majority of our generation, we have immense experience in proceeding through the fog of uncertainty and overcoming our objective despite opposition. Additionally, Many of these young students we sit in class with every day look up to us. It is our responsibility to assist this generation with the skills we have to help foster success and make these United States as great as they ever were. I challenge you today, my friends, to immerse yourselves in whatever you do. If you attend classes here at Stockton, try your best to achieve excellence and get involved on campus for causes you care about. If you will not push yourself to su succeed for yourself, your family, or this generation, I have compiled a small list of people that you should do it for. Our honored dead, each of them a dear friend who have, 
breathe their final breaths far from home that most of our, in places most of our civilian counterparts have never heard of. In their name, we must be successful. The children who will grow up with but a photograph or video recording as the only thing left for them of their mother or father. The gold-starred parents who keep their beloved child's bedroom the same way it was when they left for deployment. The widows and widowers who must undergo the task of picking up the pieces and praying that they will meet their beloved once more when they themselves depart from this world. The friends and siblings who order a drink and leave it on the bar counter for their endeared on their birthday after they have long since departed in the hopes that by some miracle they will walk back in and join them. Each veteran has endured the hardship so that great multitudes of citizens can live freely in comfort. You veterans have said goodbye to your families knowing you may never see them again, felt the intense fear of death over and over again, and then returned to a society which doesn't understand you. It is my belief that you all live, you deserve to live long, meaningful lives in happiness and peace. But remember this small list because our service must continue in other facets as civilians. Thank you, God bless you, and Semper Fi Delis. Thank you, Paul. As you can see, our men and women are true leaders. And speaking of which, I'm sure Pat Carney's gonna hit me over the head with a nine iron for screwing up his name. But anyway, I'd like to also uh, just point out Jason Babin, Jason has done tremendous job working with our veterans each and every day on many different areas. Uh, his program to, on veteran awareness in the classroom uh, has just been a tremendous addition uh, to our program. And of course, how can I forget my buddy back here, Hemi, and uh, Officer uh, Tracy Stewart, who again has taken out time or day off to uh, wake up Hemi and get them, uh, shake them up there for uh, Veterans Day. So we thank you. Now it is my honor and privilege to present to you a very, very outstanding leader, the Honorable Diane Gov. Diane has met the challenge, and it is a challenge, serving in government, to do the right thing for our veterans. I am impressed with everything her signature is on. She has done everything right, doing the right thing. Diane Gov definitely is, is there. I run into her also around the state at veteran uh, uh, activity. She's the only assemblyman I run into. But she's there, she's there for our veterans. She serves on the New, at the New Jersey Assembly, uh, which by the way, she just won re-election. We congratulate you. She serves on our Military and Veteran Affairs Committee. She is a true champion of Stockton. She has helped us champion the cause of Vet Teach, our program that gets our, our uh, student veterans into the teaching uh, uh, classroom in a in a fast track way, and has been <coughs> excuse me <coughs> has been very instrumental in the initiatives that New Jersey has made in higher education when it comes to veterans. So, without further ado, I'd like to uh, introduce Assemblyman Gov. Thank you so much, Tom. Can you hear me? Thank you. First and foremost, what I have to do is thank all you veterans for your service to our country. And also, I want to thank anyone who is actively serving currently. Thank you so much for preserving our freedoms, our democracy, everything that we are enjoying here today. You are preserving, you are preserving the United States ideals, what we have known for over 200 years. But last but not least, we also have to thank the families of these vets and these active service personnel because their 
sacrificing their loved ones to protect us. So thank you for, to your families. And again, thank you, Stockton, for inviting me here today. It really is a distinct privilege, and I'm humbled to speak here today on such a special occasion and join with you today in remembering and honoring and celebrating our nation's veterans. It is fitting that we are all here today and that I can't think of any other institution of higher learning more dedicated to veterans than Stockton University. As you've all heard, long-standing and accomplished track record of, of uh, serving veterans, Stockton was recently ranked number six among the best colleges and universities nationwide for veterans by the Military Times Best for Vets College 2016, which is recognized as the most comprehensive school-by-school -school assessment of veteran and military school services and rates of academic achievement. So congratulations, Stockton. In a nation defined by its freedom and democratic values, veterans are justifiably held in such high regard in our society as their character is accurately defined by a love of country, professionalism, selflessness, and enduring commitment to their brothers and sisters in arms. Teaching American history and government to our student, your youth, for over 32 years has allowed me to have an even greater respect for veterans and a tremendous sense of pride in our armed services. Upon graduating high school, a number of my students chose to enlist and being very proud of them. Some went on to serve in the Persian Gulf, Afghanistan, Iraq, but all went where they were needed most. No questions asked. My thoughts are often with these students who I'm, I, I remain very proud of their service. Just yesterday, I saw one of my former students of 22 years ago who um, I hadn't seen him in over 20 years and just so proud. And uh, it was nice seeing him. He's still um, in the National Guard uh, Reserves. And it's just, and he served overseas and I thanked him for all what he has done. And it was just so nice to see my students so many years later and so very proud of them. Um, as many before them, these students answered the call of our country, which is faced with combating terrorism on multiple continents in what seems to be an increasingly chaotic world where the ideals of personal freedom is under constant threat. But my respect for veterans began at a very early age with my dad, who was a veteran. I was very close to him, very proud of him. He served proudly in the United States Navy, in the Pacific Theater in World War II on uh, the Frank Knox destroyer. He instilled in my family the love of patriotism, our country, and I, I admired him. Some days I wish he was here today to kind of fill me in on certain things. But he proudly served his country. Against this personal background, veterans' issues have played an extremely important role in my decision to serve in the legislature. And as always, I am grateful for whenever I can come and um, come to Stockton. When teaching our country's history, you, ar you arrive at an inescapable and simple fact. Millions of people across the globe owe their freedom and their very lives to the courageous, courageous efforts of the United States military. I just wish that other countries would at that very least acknowledge the historical fact given the very high price our country has paid. Only one has to look at the two Koreas one a beacon of freedom and the other a totalitarian regime. To understand, the incredible, in, to understand the incredible impact that sacrifices made by our country's veterans have had on our world. As a nation stands as a stabilizing force in the world, we take pride in the effectiveness of our military with understanding that there are grave dangers that exist which can only be met with lethal force. However, 
Not nearly enough credit is given to the absolutely indispensable role our nation's military service personnel play in massive relief efforts around the world. For many victims of natural disasters, regardless of where they are in the world, their first sign of hope is the sight of that American aircraft carrier, cargo jet, helicopter, carrying American service personnel and desperately needed supplies. Again, America's critics should take note. For me personally, American exceptionalism is rooted in our veterans' service to the nation. And I am privileged to be a descendant of veterans who have fought in the War of Independence and risked everything for the chance of being here free to pursue their dreams, not that of a monarchy. Without our veterans' courage, sacrifice, and indomitable spirit, this nation certainly would not possess the qualities that distinguish it in the annals of our history. Freedom, peace, and pursuit of happiness would be dreams, illusions, or just merely concepts without those persons willing to stand up and place their own lives in great jeopardy for others. And I mention the pursuit of happiness because I recognize the sacred obligation that I, as an elected representative, have to ensure that our veterans are afforded every opportunity to pursue their own dreams and enjoy the quality of life they have secured for us. Why all of us have a disdain of political gamemanship, we all see that, that creates gridlock, but I can tell you in the state of New Jersey and the New Jersey legislature, there are no partisan politics when it comes to veterans. This is very warming because everybody realizes we need to help our vets. Stockton has made that commitment to effectively serve our veterans by first and foremost ensuring veterans have access to the highest quality of education. And through, as you've heard, the dedicated staff, Stockton has been nationally recognized as being among the best colleges for veterans in the country. And today's ceremony is a testament to Stockton's leadership of veterans' issues in higher education. In closing, I just want to emphasize how important it is for these ceremonies, such as this, are held in remembrance. For far too many families, a loved one made the ultimate sacrifice in, the, in, the, in their country, for their country. Even with their cherished memories, the loss of these families is like an open wound that will never quite heal. However, I know these families are grateful to persons such as you who have taken it upon themselves to personally ensure that their loved one's service and sacrifice will always be recognized, remembered, and honored. Again, thank you for the privilege of being able to come to Stockton today and to celebrate our veterans. Thank you so much. It really is a humbling experience. Thank you, Assemblyman Gov, and thank you for your commitment to veterans in the state of New Jersey and beyond. We need more leaders that are going to step forward and do the right thing. Since our inception of this program seven years ago, Pastor John Quinn, with his heart for the veterans, has always been part of this ceremony and has been a very important part. I would now like to introduce our professor and pastor, uh, John Quinn. We are blessed, aren't we? Look around at the uh, veterans that are here, the students that have done so much, uh, the um, people that have served in various wars, elected officials that take up the banner, administrators, a university. We are blessed. We have much to be thankful for. I want to just take a moment and uh, have a word of prayer and uh, give God glory for uh, the tremendous blessing he's given to Stockton University. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for each person has come. And 
Lord, when we look at people that have given of their lives, um, sacrificed uh, deeply, and their families have given much, our only emotion can possibly be gratitude, uh, thanksgiving for the uh, tremendous service. They went where, where we couldn't go. Uh, they uh, volunteered when others uh, chose to stay home. They stayed up at night in uh, places that not necessarily they wanted to be, dangerous spots. This is the tradition that we celebrate today. Thank you for the work that has been done here at Stockton. Thank you that this has become a place where veterans are welcome. Thank you for the work that continues. And we pray for change. We pray that at a state level and at a national level, that we would remember and honor those who have given uh, in, to our land as veterans. Lord, give us wisdom to fix our veterans administration and make that a priority in the years to come, that we would truly be grateful and that gratitude would not be just in words and cards and thoughts and songs, but in real action, tangible efforts to make a difference in our veterans' lives. And I thank you for the professors here that have picked up the banner and have honored the veteran experience. Thank you for the students that have gained, gathered together and have become a force on our campus. Thank you for the tremendous achievements that they've made academically. Here they've made it a better place. And all I can say in conclusion is we give thanks for all the blessings today. We ask this in your name. Amen. Thank you, John. We're now going to move to our second phase of this great program in Independence Plaza. And after that, we will go to the Veterans Park, a ne very uh, nice ceremony there. And then we will all gather at the events room for a nice luncheon where awards will be given out. So uh, please follow us and uh, thank you again. Welcome, everyone, to our second station, Independence Plaza, which sits adjacent to our academic spine, which serves as the home to our classrooms, our library, various laboratories, our faculty and staff offices, and a two-story art gallery and Stockton Performing Arts Center. Also, and is also adjacent to our Independence Plaza and our Independence Walk, both of which have been named um, as such for several reasons. The declaration here, which, which is represented at scale uh, for the world to see, is something we're very proud of here at Stockton. That declaration signals our country's defining moment in which we chose to think differently. We chose our own path free from tyranny, free from oppressive rule, free to charter our own course in our own history. The Declaration of Independence of, of, in itself is in emblematic form a representation of uh, the, the Declaration of Independence which many of our students um, at, when they come here as freshmen uh, declare independence from their, their parents. Not in the same shape and form as uh, the Declaration originally uh, was crafted but much more so, they, w they wanted to charter their own course, and, and we, we work and try to help them find their way. At this point in time, I would like to call forward uh, Wendy Lang, Director of Operation Co uh, College Promise, for her remarks. Wendy Lang is a staunch supporter of our veteran program here and across the country. Uh, please give uh, Wendy Lang a round of applause. Thank you, Pedro. I'm going to try to blow through this in my North Jersey speed of speaking so you don't get wet. Uh, first of all, congratulations to Stockton for their ranking as number six. I would have put them at, at number one myself. And I will tell you, as I travel across the nation, I always use Stockton 
um, as a representation of some of the best practices that you could possibly have on campus. It's my pleasure to be here. On November 19th, or November 1919, President Wilson proclaimed November 11th as the first commemoration of Armistice Day with the following proclamation. To us in America, the reflections of Armistice Day will be filled with solemn pride and the heroism of those who died in the country's service and with gratitude for the victory, both because of the thing for which it has freed us and because of the opportunity it has given America to show her sympathy with peace and justice in the Council of Nations. And so it has been for the past 96 years that we have acknowledged and honored those who have put on the uniform and raised their right hand to safeguard our great nation and its values. It is a day to recognize heroism, in its most fundamental form, putting the greater good above the individual, the common denominator of the military community. Early this year, I had the opportunity to sit down with one of my heroes, Colonel Jack Jacobs, this giant of a man in a diminutive frame, completely rejects the term hero with a discernible amount of embarrassment. On March 9, 1968, Jacobs found himself nearly impossibly pinned down by an entrenched Viet Cong in the long hours preceding the actions that had earned him the nation's highest military acknowledgement, the Medal of Honor. In actuality, he wasn't meant to be in battle at all. He was an advisor, and his combat duty was finished, or said his supervisors. Subterfuge. That's how he ended up in the situation, by his own choice. The Medal of Honor has been awarded 3,471 times to recipients who have distinguished themselves at the risk of their own life above and beyond the call of duty in action against an enemy. In the case of Jacobs, the citation reads, for conspicuous gallantry and bravery in actions. His response to this description, I did what anyone would have done, just a normal person put in a nearly impossible situation. An obvious scholar, the colonel refers to that moment with a paraphrase from the words of a Jewish sage, if not you, then who? If not now, then when? My, one, my mind wandered that morning as I considered the uncanny symbolism of the Statue of Liberty lingering over his right shoulder through the windows of the sun-drenched studio at Battery Place where we sat. I had met the Colonel several years ago right here at Stockton University as he began his tour of sharing his experiences and wisdom to a younger generation, a part that he clearly revels in and takes with unbridled urgency. As an ambassador of the less than 100 Medal of Honor living recipients, he visits schools of every age group to remind students that we all have a responsibility to protect the Republic, and not just through military service. Not every service member has been in combat like Jacobs, and only a handful has received the Medal of Honor. Nevertheless, their commitment is the same. I find that most are reluctant heroes, just like Colonel Jacobs, acknowledging their service with the only the most modest pride. They're all still heroes in my mind. Here at Stockton, we have over 600 of these students who have made the choice to join the armed services and place risking themselves in harm's way in order to secure the freedoms and ideals fundamental to the way we live our lives each and every day. Post 9-11 GI Bill has supported the educational goals of some one million of these veterans and service members, propelling educational attainment to veterans to a level not seen since the original GI Bill. What is perhaps most poignant in my mind is that nearly 70% are first-generation learners, 70%. What else do we know about these students? In a research project conducted by Syracuse, we learned that the majority were enlisted, have veteran status, and served between four and eight years. More than half joined for educational benefits, and nearly 75% replied that their military specialization was a key factor in pursuing college. Navigating the VA, surprise, not really, Getting a job and financial struggles were cited as the most prevalent challenges they faced. Now here's some good news. Nearly 70% cited university resources, policies, and administration as being helpful. And that's where we come in at Operation College Promise. At OCP, disseminating the knowledge of campus resources and services for a newer generation of military-affiliated students is a mission we take great pride in, is our way of giving back, our own call to duty. Through our professional development efforts, hundreds of schools like Stockton's are thriving in their commitment to support military-affiliated students with appropriate services that optimize degree attainment. These efforts are offering opportunities for these students at a level that is truly unprecedented. But our work is far from done. So today I offer a challenge to continue these cr critical efforts on campus and remain vigilant as to how to adapt to this population. 
While the most recent conflicts, conflicts may have receded from the public eye, the needs of our veterans remain. While all veterans are not alike, they carry the same tenets that will guide them throughout their time on campus and their entire lives. And with our continued diligence, our humble service back to them will provide countless opportunities to, through, and beyond education. We owe these heroes that and much more. As Colonel Jack Jacob said, if not you, then who? If not now, then when? God bless our heroes. And God bless America. Thank you. Okay, uh, I'd like to now introduce one of our past presidents of the SVO, who's already out in the workforce. He has, he'll be graduating in May and going on to grad school, but he already is working uh, out in the workforce helping our homeless veterans. Nelson Gonzalez has been a tremendous leader of our organization here at Stockton and a tremendous, tremendous force in the community when it comes to helping our, our heroes. So without further ado, Nelson Gonzalez. Good afternoon, everyone, and I'm honored once again to be able to speak to everyone here. Uh, first thing I would like to do, every single veteran that's out here, please raise your hand or stand up and be recognized. You all deserve a round of applause. Uh, like Tom stated, I've been very lucky um, here at Stockton with all the services they provide for all their student veterans. It's through Stockton's uh, Veterans Job Fair last November uh, of 2014 that I ended up getting a job working for Catholic Charities Ready Vet Go. And their main mission is for me to go out in the community, Atlanta and Cape May counties, and find my fellow veterans that are homeless or in danger of homelessness and put them back in housing stability and case management after that. That wouldn't have happened. I thought, you know, after I graduate, hopefully get into the master's program, then start searching for a job. But Stockton put the stuff out there for their veterans to make things happen. But the one thing I stated last year, and I'll state it again, you know, hey, veterans are thanked and recognized one day out of the year. But veterans do their jobs and service members every single day of the year. So next time, you know, you're in line somewhere, and you see someone wearing a Marine Corps, Army, Air Force, Coast Guard, whichever branch of the service. You see them buying a cup of coffee, a bag of chips. Don't be scared to put out a few dollars for that veteran and say, you know something, thanks a lot. You could really make their day. Those little things, you know, you don't have to say thank you. It's really going to make them feel really great and really happy because you appreciate all the sacrifices they did and so many others. So that's the thing that we also need to do also. Not just thank the veterans one day a year, every single day because they are veterans out there that need assistance, do need help. And we have to do our part, like so many of us are doing now, to make sure those veterans are living that life of well-being. I'm going to keep this short because I really don't want to get rained on because I've been sick for a while. But once again, thank you to all my fellow veterans and everyone here at Stockton that helps the veteran community surpass the goals. And number six in the nation, Wendy was right, we are definitely number one. Okay, getting a good workout today on the knee, right? Okay, before it rains, we're going to go to phase three. I just want to say one thing. You know, our, our veterans, how great they are and all. Also, our veteran family, Jason Knox, son, right, uh, helped with the Green Light Bulb Initiative and has been honored uh, in his town council. Uh, his son is, I think, about 11 years old and really taking this initiative on, on his own. And this is what we have at Stockton. This type of spirit, this type of leadership, and we're very fortunate. And each and every day, each and every day, I thank myself that I'm, I thank everybody that I'm here at Stockton. We're going right now to the uh, final stage of our uh, program, and then we'll go for the lunch.
Welcome to our third and final station. Welcome to our mem uh, Veteran Memorial Park, the third and final station in our Veterans Day ceremonies, our innermost sanctum, a place of refuge, a place for reflection, a place on our campus that has been carefully and meticulously carved out to commemorate the service of our met veteran men and women. This special place is open to the heavens above. It is surrounded on all four sides. The permanence of these structures and the protection they provide allow us here at Stockton an opportunity to protect the eternal memory of those who have fallen in the protection of our nation. I would like to call Dr. Harvey Kesselman, the president of Stockton University, who will share a welcome and some of the history of Stockton University and its commitment to serving our veteran student population. Dr. Kesselman. I have prepared remarks. First, good afternoon, everyone. And I want to thank everyone for being here today, um, which I will go through because some of this I want to make sure you hear. But also, I, I'm going to go a little extemporaneous to talk a little bit about the early years at Stockton uh, and how significant the uh, veteran population was to the history of this institution for those of you uh, who weren't back here back in 1971. But first, good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. Today, Stockton's Veteran Day ceremony brings together students <coughs> faculty, staff, community members to our campus along with families, friends, and supporters from all of the surrounding communities. Together, we gather once again in Stockton's Veterans Park to honor all veterans who have given their ultimate sacrifice. Stockton's support and its recognition of our veteran students has an incredibly rich and vital history at this college. When we first opened up Back in 1971, with about 1,000 students, there were literally hundreds of Vietnam veterans who were part of the campus community. Our dean of students, who recently passed, Peter Mercado, was a Marine and a Vietnam veteran. Colonel Ken Stowe, the person who designed all of the academic complex that you see here and throughout the region, was a veteran. Gene Jones, who was the director of the UF program, director of Veterans Affairs. Gloria Brangenberg, who then became Gloria Maestas, she too followed that group. I remember very, very vividly when in 1982, buses from Stockton went to the opening of the Vietnam War. Literally, 1982, I think it was November 10th or 11th or 12th, somewhere in that range, when that occurred, a huge number of Stockton students faculty and staff supported that. Veterans have made a significant contribution, obviously to our nation, obviously to the world, but specifically to this campus. And each and every day, for the students who are here with us today, you need to remember that as you walk up and down the halls, that if it wasn't for the veteran population that was here back when, and many of whom are here today, much of Stockton would not be what it is today. In 2009, thanks to a number of people who are here right now, we reestablished the Office of Veterans Affairs. When I say reestablished, because we had one back then. It was one of our first offices and first groups. At that time, though, just a few years ago, there were less than 100 veterans on the campus. Now, as you've heard, there are 600, just about 600, 150 veterans in this campus, and we are to be, we're, we're thrilled and honored to have that population here. And it makes us the number one New Jersey higher education institution for on campus veteran students, and we are proud and honored to be in that. In addition, our veterans do extremely well academically, 
as you've probably heard, with graduation and retention rates among not only the top in New Jersey, but the top in the nation, which is why, obviously, we just received the kind of recognition that we did as being a best for vets institution. We're not only a best for vets institution, we are a veterans institution, period, and we have been for a very, very long period of time. Today, and I wish Peter and, and some of the folks' names were here right now today in here because they would be so proud to know that there is this park here. We will take part in the solemn ceremony. We are here in love, respect, and honor to lay a ceremonial wreath and pay tribute to all of our fallen heroes. We are proud, our veterans, not only today, but each and every day we are proud of our veterans and we recognize their service and commitments to this nation and I want to personally thank each and every one of you for all that you've done in the past, for all that you currently do and for all that I know you will continue to do in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Harvey. Thank you very much. And yes, Harvey always reminds me that Stockton was always vet veteran friendly from the beginning. And uh, we know that, we feel that, and we're fortunate. And Brielle Lord, one of our top students, veteran advocates, will be playing the taps. Thank you, Brielle. We now have Stockapella singing Amazing Grace. Thank you, Stockapella. I think we're number one in song in this campus as well. Great job. As always, we close out our program with remarks from uh, a leader in our SBO. Kwasin Isaac has been a, a mainstay on this campus as a student leader, a member of two executive boards, the SBO and UBSS. Better known as Q, if you could uh, please come up and say a few words in our program. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm not really going to be long. I just wanted to uh, read a quick poem that I thought really reflected uh, me and my veteran brothers and sisters. Uh, quick about the poem. It's called Invictus by William Henley. 
the word Invictus is Latin for unconquerable, and that definitely reflects the mindset that we have as veterans, all the hardships and pains that we've gone through. Uh, just definitely always and forever will be unconquerable. So, Invictus. Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgings of chance, my head is bloody, but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but horrors of the shade, and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishment the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Thank you. Thank you, Q. And now with our invocation, again, Pastor John Quinn. just want to take a second and do some reflection with you about the nature of sacrifice. At an age when most young people are thinking about their great futures and their careers and what's ahead for them in the world, our country has individuals who think of country and of service and sacrifice. And as we think of sacrifice, at the very core of sacrifice has to be love. Love of country, love of our families, our nation, the people that we are called to mission, to protect. It is absolutely wonderful to think of the fact that these individuals took time out of their busy lives to sacrifice. Some sacrificed some, and some fa sacrificed all. I also want to connect that with a, a saying that says, perfect love casts out all fear. We live in fearful times, don't we? But the love that is wrapped up in sacrifice has given us the freedom that we enjoy today. And it continues to give that freedom to us. And it is the protection that we have because of the great men and women that are here and they are just representative, just a small representation across our country that there were people that in love stepped forward and sacrificed much so that we would be free. In this place of reflection, I want us to think about how, how sacrifice, love, and fear are connected and how this sacrifice and that perfect love is the thing that casts out fear in a very anxious world. Let's pray. Thank you for this day. Thank you for holding off the rain. Uh, thank you for each speaker. Thank you especially uh, for the tradition that has been here at Stockton from the very beginning. You have uh, seen fit to send veterans to our uh, campus and we've been the richer for it. I thank you for each one. I thank you for each one that is here today. I thank you for administrators and faculty members and staff people who have come to appreciate how dear this sacrifice is. And this day is just a small token of our appreciation. Today we think also of those who gave the ultimate sacrifice as we lay this wreath. Where do we find such people that would lay down their lives so that we would be free? We are humbled and grateful for their great offer of love for us. We stand in the middle of a tumultuous world, not in fear, because those brave men and women still live and still exist and still go forth. And that is where our freedom lies. We are thankful today, and we ask this in your name. Amen. Thank you, John. We're now going to reconvene in our event room for luncheon. Special thanks again to Assemblyman Gov, uh, Wendy Lang, and Harvey Kesselman. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule. See you upstairs. Yeah.